Good morning, folks. I wanted to give you all a chance to see a, uh, a full workout of a problem dealing with a rational function. We introduced those on uh, Wednesday. And uh, rational functions are um, their ratios of polynomials. So they're made up of uh, two polynomials, one over the other. In this case, uh, the, the question we're going to just deal with is to analyze and sketch a graph of the rational function g of x equals x squared plus x minus 30 divided by x squared minus 3x plus 10. Uh, we want to include any intercepts, asymptotes, which is something new that we weren't seeing with just polynomials, and estimates of any maxima or minima. We should certainly include n behavior as well, but that's going to deal with the asymptotes here. All right, so working with this function, we one thing to realize is that each of these um, polynomials, they're in standard form. Rational functions aren't considered simplified when the uh, numerator and the denominator are in standard form. In fact, most of the information we want about them deal with when the numerator and the denominator are zero. And so as a result, usually we consider a rational function simplified once we've factored it. So we need to factor both the numerator and the denominator here. So let's uh, go ahead and start with the, with the numerator, x squared plus x minus 30, and we want to factor that. Uh, to write that in factored form, we can use the AC method. A times uh, C is negative 30. I want factors of negative 30 that add up to uh, 1. That's B. Uh, those, that would be uh, 6 and negative 5. Okay, so we can unfoil this or factor by grouping by splitting this up into 6 and 5, and then we end up factoring out the greatest common factor. It ends up factoring to x plus 6, x minus 5. All right, so, and you can just check that real quick. x squared plus 6x minus 5x is x, and then 6 times 5 is negative 30. All right. Likewise, we've got x squared minus 3x minus 10. I want factors of negative 10 that add up to negative 3, and that's going to be negative 5 and 2. Instead of doing factoring by grouping, I'm just going to go with a quick method because the coefficient on my x term is 1. This is x minus 5 x plus 2, I'm going to check it real quick, x squared minus 5x plus 2x is negative 3x, negative 10, yes. So, so I can rewrite my rational function as x plus 6, x minus 5, x minus 5 over x minus 2. So let me do that real quick. x plus 6, x minus 5 x minus 5 over x minus 2. Um, looking at this right now, the one thing that we want to do, whenever we want to analyze a function, uh, with polynomials it was easy because polynomials, their domain is just all real numbers. But for rational functions, we have to be careful. We have domain restrictions. We have things that we can't do. We are not allowed to allow the denominator to be 0. We don't divide by 0. So once I've got it in this form, I can write my domain restrictions. And there's a lot of different ways to do this. I generally, if I'm just analyzing the graph, if they don't specifically ask for the domain of the graph or whatever, I'm just doing it for my analysis, I'm going to list my domain restrictions. And I'm going to say x can't be, sorry, that should be a plus, uh, x can't be, the 0 associated with this is 5. When I make x 5, 5 minus 5 is 0. And the 0 associated with this is negative 2. So x can't be negative 2, and it can't be 5. Those are my two domain restrictions. All the other values of x are fine. Now, you could be a little more specific. I could say the domain of g is equal to set of all x, a real number, such that x is not equal to 5, and x is not equal to negative 2. That's the formal set builder notation, but when you're just doing an analysis like this, all of that extra stuff is, is a little bit superfluous. I'm, I'm perfectly content with you writing that there. The main thing is that you show it appropriately on your graph when you get to those points, and if you do that, I know you've done the analysis. All right. 
Now, once we've listed our domain restrictions, we can simplify further. Now I can cancel common factors. If you notice what this really is, I'm going to rewrite this a little bit. I can rewrite this as x plus 6 over x plus 2, and then it's x minus 5 over x minus 5. Okay, This thing right here is just a really fancy way to write 1. Not quite. It's not defined when x equals 5. But otherwise, otherwise, this is always equal to 1. So you can cancel common factors. Now, I'm, I'm, I did it here. Normally, if I was doing this, I would cancel the common factor once I listed the domain restriction. All right. What that tells me is that this, when x equals 5, is not going to be an asymptote. It's going to be a removable discontinuity. Right. It's going to be a hole poked in my graph, so I'll, I'll want to analyze that particular value. I'm going to plug 5 in to this and find the hole, so we'll, we'll definitely want to plot that particular discontinuity. Um, now, I know my other point, there is no other common factor, so I know that at x equals negative 2, this is... so x equals negative 2 is a vertical asymptote. That I know. x is not equal to negative 2. It doesn't cancel out, so it's not a, not a hole poked in the graph. It's not a renewable dis, removable discontinuity. Um, I want to look right now at my uh, horizontal asymptotes. What does this thing look like? Basically, the end behavior as x gets large or x gets small. Uh, looking at this particular graph, I've got the same degree. These are both first degree. Um, for large values of x, you could put it this way, the limit as x goes to infinity of x plus 6 over x plus 2. For large values of x, these become round off error, right? For 5 billion and 6 is basically the same as 5 billion and 2. It's about equal to 5 billion over 5 billion. So you can actually say that this limit is the limit as x goes. It's the same limit. It approaches the same number as this guy, which then simplifies to 1. So as I get really large values of x, this thing just starts to look like the 1 function. And the same thing on the negative side. As x goes to negative infinity, as it decreases, we get a really, really negative number divided by the same, basically the same number, off by a little bit, but it's about the same. Um, so like, you know, 4,999,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,
there is a hole, a removable discontinuity. Of this is the point five comma eleven over seven. That point right there is a hole. And now I've got the basic. Oh, I need one more thing. I need to know when y is equal to zero. And that I know. Um, I want to plot my intercepts. Uh, the y-intercept we've gotten, right? So we know the y-intercept. Uh, where did I write that? It was 3, right? This is the y-intercept when x equals 3. My x-intercept means y equals 0, OK? And that happens when the numerator is 0, OK? And in this case, it's x plus 6 must then equal 0, so x must equal negative 6. So my x-intercept occurs down here. That's the point. That's negative 6. That's my x-intercept. I've got my horizontal asymptotes. I know that this thing basically now looks kind of like the, um, the 1 over x graph. It's a hyperbola. It's got a hole poked in it there, but it's got asymptotes, a vertical asymptote at negative 2. Right here. Now, I haven't done the formal uh, limit analysis to, to, to verify that as I get close to to negative 2 from the uh, right-hand side, it goes to positive infinity. And as I get close to negative 2 from the left-hand side, it goes to negative infinity. But you can do that and see for yourself that it's the case. You can also plug that in your calculator and just check it, and you'll see that, that basic shape. So we've now sketched the graph. Um, there are no maxima or minima. This is These are constantly decreasing functions. They have that, that traditional shape. Uh, if this thing had had maybe a slant asymptote, had a slightly higher degree, sometimes it bottoms out and heads up and you get a maximum or minimum. This one doesn't have that. So there are no turning points or no max or min values. There's no relative max or min. And that'll do for this uh, particular one. We'll do some more examples of these later.